Well, welcome to the Friday devotional. John Miller here, and we are working our way through the book of Ephesians. Uh, so grab your Bible, <clears throat> if you would like, and uh, look at chapter 1, beginning with verse 15. We are going to talk about, or read through, a prayer of Paul to the Ephesian believers. And this will teach us a lot. How do you improve on a, on a biblical prayer? Uh, we're going to learn how to pray for other people by the way Paul prays for the Christians in the ancient city of Ephesus. So here we go, uh, beginning with verse 15. Uh, he says, Ever since I heard of your strong faith in the Lord, immediately he begins by complimenting them, uh, their faith in the Lord Jesus and your love, for God's people everywhere. So they were known, <clears throat> had a reputation for uh, loving fellow believers, not only in the church in Ephesus, but as they would come through on the trade routes uh, uh, through that, uh, that uh, hugely important ancient city. Uh, they're just known for, for being very loving, probably hospitable and taking people in and caring about them. And he said, I have not, <clears throat> this is Paul, I have not stopped thanking God for you. So here's another element um, of encouragement that he hasn't stopped thanking the Lord for him, which tells us we need to be thanking the Lord uh, for the people in our lives. He said, I pray for you constantly. <clears throat> How about that? Um, they were on his mind all the time. And remember, Paul had... Uh, many concerns for many churches and thousands of believers, and yet he zeroes in on them. He says, uh, I pray for you constantly asking God, <clears throat> now here's, here's a request that we can uh, use for people, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, but I've asked him to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. And so we are to pray for our brothers and sisters that they might grow in this wisdom. By the way, I'm using the New Living Translation because as I've looked at it, I think it's a, a fair, uh, <clears throat> fair uh, resemblance to the original uh, thought here. Um, so uh, I'm praying that you might have spiritual wisdom and wisdom is seeing life from God's point of view. I want you to see life from God's point of view. And he's going to lay that out for us here. Uh, and, and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge. So this idea of growing in our knowledge of God, getting to know God more deeply is, is his point here. I pray that your hearts may be flooded with light. So another aspect of request, I pray to God that your hearts might be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope uh, he has given us or he has given to those that he called. So he's telling them that, you know, you, you are a called people and I want you to understand uh, how, I want you to have confident hope in the Lord who called you. Uh, he called you his holy people who are his rich and glorious inheritance. And so again, uh, a, a blessing to them. <clears throat> he says, I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe. Now he's gonna go into explaining the, the greatness of this power, but he wants them to understand the great power of Almighty God. Remember, they're living in the midst of a pagan society, Greco-Roman world. Uh, where people were giving all the power to the various gods, and particularly uh, Diana uh, being given uh, a central place in that, in that city, the god Diana, or Ar Artemis, <clears throat> as it was called in, uh, in, uh, in Greek. Um, he says this, he says, um, I, I want you to come to understand this great power this is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead. So you might know the very power of the resurrection, of the, of, of the power that it took to raise Jesus from the dead. 
And, and, and that power seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realm. So here we see this image of the Father on his grand throne and Jesus on his right, seated, having done the work of redemption, uh, completed. In verse 21, now he is far above all ruler and authority. Uh, so at God's right hand, and he is far above all ruler and authority uh, or ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else. So it just shows his, his grand oversight of everything that is and that he is the ultimate authority, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. So he's, he reigns supreme now. He'll reign supreme uh, later. Uh, after this world has, um, after what we know and what we see is done, and God not just renovates a universe, but creates a whole new universe, uh, a whole new world for uh, God's kingdom uh, to dwell, whatever that's going to look like when there's a new heaven and a new earth. But uh, he says, God has put all things under the authority of Christ. So God the Father has given all authority to Jesus Christ, and he's made him head over all things. Why? For the benefit of the church, for the benefit of those who have come to faith in Jesus Christ, the church, the gathered ones, the holy ones. And the church is his body. The church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ. So we, again, the church, the church universal and the church local, who are made up of true believers now, true believers, because the church universal is made up of all true believers uh, all over the world. The church local is made up of a whole bunch of people, uh, most of whom, hopefully, are truly born again. So the church local. Um, and we represent Jesus in a fallen world. So we're here for the purpose of representing Jesus to unbelievers. If that weren't the case, we'd probably all go to heaven. We, the, 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 we, all believers would go to heaven and live out in eternity with whatever God has for us in eternity. But we're here on earth for a purpose uh, to reflect the Jesus who left 2,000 years ago and then came to invade our life through the power of the Holy Spirit, and we are called the church, the gathered ones. Um, amazing, isn't he? Who fills all things everywhere with himself. So it's all about Jesus Christ, and this is a grand and great and glorious prayer and so we need to pick it apart as we read it. And you can pray this for people you know or the church. For instance, for instance, CFC, to pray this very prayer, and God will be honored in that. So I hope you have a great weekend, and we'll begin next Friday with another edition in the book of Ephesians. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye.